Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا رسول حيا رسول حيّر الفراخ خيّر الفراخ الله أكبر الله أكبر لا We seek Allah's protection against the influences of the shaitan who has been rejected in our caste. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. With God's name, our merciful benefactor and our most merciful redeemer. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahduhu la sharika Allah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu rasulu sallallahu alaihi wasallam amubar. We give open testimony that there is only one God. Allah who stands alone without any partners or associates and it is he alone who deserves our worship We further give open testimony that Muhammad the Prophet to whom the Quran was revealed is Allah's messenger his slave servant And he is the seal of the prophets We pray the prayers of peace be upon Muhammad the Prophet and all of those righteous servants that follow him and all else that follows this excellent greeting Dear believers, I greet you. As-salamu It is my prayer that Allah will guide my speech and my tongue, prevent me from errors and mistakes, acknowledging before I begin any that I make of my own. I humbly ask for his forgiveness for those mistakes in advance, and I pray that he leads me to a better understanding so that I won't make them again. <clears throat> I further acknowledge before beginning that any good that comes from this kuba or this talk is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and we say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen All of the praise is for God All the praise belongs to God All the praise belongs to God Who is the Lord of all of the worlds I advise you as I advise myself That the most important thing we'll ever do in this life Is to believe in God and thereafter have taqwa A, con uh, a conscious regardfulness of Him That will prevent us from making the errors and mistakes That we sometimes make in this life that cause stain on our souls and then keep us from the best rewards in the hereafter. Dear believers, we thank Allah for all of the many countless blessings that he has bestowed upon us, all that are being bestowed upon us as I speak, and all of those to come. Amongst those many blessings is the conscious mind to be regardful of him, is the gift of Quran which gives guidance, the gift of all of the signs that are in his creation and again the consciousness to see those signs to appreciate them to study them and then be rewarded with the insights that they bring so that we can be the men and women that he intends for us to be dear believers god says to us simply in quran this is surah nisa and uh i will begin <clears throat> inshallah with Ayah 36, Allah says, Serve Allah and join not any partners with him and do good. Do good to your parents, 
kinfolk, orphans, those in need, neighbors who are near, neighbors who are strangers, the companion by your side, the wayfarer that you meet, and what your right hand possesses. For Allah love is not the arrogant and the vainglorious. Nor does he love those who are niggardly or enjoin niggardliness on others or hide the bounties which Allah has bestowed on them. For we have prepared for those who resist faith a punishment that is steep. A punishment that steeps them in their contempt. Nor does Allah love those who spin of their substance to just to be seen by men, but truly have no faith in Allah or the last day. If any take the evil one for their intimate friend or companion, what a dreadful and intimate friend they have chosen indeed and what burden would it be for them if they would only just have faith in Allah in the last day and that they would spin out of what Allah has given them for their substance for Allah has full knowledge of them Allah is never unjust in the least degree if there is any good that is done if there are any good if there is any good that is done Allah doubles it and he gives from his own presence a great reward how then if we brought from each people a witness and we brought thee as a witness against these people on that day those who reject faith and disobey the messenger will wish that the earth were made one with them but never will they hide a single fact from Allah Sadaqallahu Ladeen Dear believers, true guidance indeed in fact as all that we find in the Quran is true guidance these ayats are so plain and self-explanatory that I don't even think that I need to give any commentary. Dear believers, let us be conscious as God has warned us to serve Allah as we should, to not join partners with him and be amongst those who do good, to be among those who avoid being niggardly, arrogant, are vainglorious to be amongst those who spend only to be seen by men to be amongst those who don't truly have faith in Allah on the last day or to take the evil one as our intimate companion for Allah says that he is never unjust in the least degree and if there is any good that is done he will double it for you and give you a reward from his own presence and if you are a rejecter of faith and these pure pieces of guidance you do so to the peril of your own soul and again, Allah, not being unjust, will give you your just reward. And we pray, our Lord, forgive us if we forget or fall into error. Grant us protection against our own shortcomings and faults. Help us to keep our feet firmly on your straight path. Cause us to strive as we should strive. And reward us for our striving both in this life as well as in the hereafter. And save us far from the torment of the fire. Amen. We see God's protection against the influences of Shaitan, who has been rejected and outcast. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. With God's name, our merciful benefactor and our most merciful redeemer. 
Dear believers, in the second part of this Kutbar talk, I really only want to touch on two things. First, I am still in a space where I'm contemplating the world events that are unfolding before us. I'm contemplating the civil unrest the riots, the looting, the protests, the escalation in people's racist behaviors, the violence, the current day lynchings, the anger and the violence against the police, the anger and the violence that is happening in our streets, the murders and the violence that we still in the midst of all of this and a pandemic are even perpetrating on ourselves. I'm contemplating all of this. And it appears that this world is in a state of chaos or turmoil. Some people see this as a good thing because they see this as a sign that things are changing. People have had enough. And some people are concerned about where we are because the chaos is so rampant that some feel that we're headed for self-destruction. I was sharing with someone recently that I attended a leadership training with the Ewing Kaufman Foundation. And this leadership training was a uh, training for community leaders. And we talked in this training about how model communities are established. And do you know that we were instructed that in order for there to exist a model community, the people that would form such a community first have to go through chaos. We were instructed that chaos, although most people see it as being a bad thing, really is a good thing. Because chaos serves as a change agent. It's sort of it's sort of like considering that you live in a peaceful place where everybody gets along you got ice cream to eat all day the best foods the best mattress the best pillow to lay on like everything for you is comfortable yet there is something better but you and you may even know that there's something better. But you're not really motivated to get the thing that is better because you are comfortable. So people tell us that if you ever decide that you want to move from your current situation, you have to, they say, step outside of your comfort zone. Because when you're comfortable, there is nothing that can move you to make change. And so in this training, we were instructed that usually communities that are comfortable were established because there was a group of people previously who were uncomfortable. 
And they decided that they were so uncomfortable that they had to move from the place that they were in to create a place of safety and comfort for themselves. And then when they got into this new space that was comfortable, then they didn't want to move. They didn't want to leave. They thought everything was beautiful. And they said that they taught us that the cycle of community life is that your community goes from a space of being comfortable to a place of chaos, to a place of comfort, comfort to a place of chaos, to a place of comfort, if you have a community that is growing. Because comfort excuse me, chaos is a change agent. All of this to say that I see what is taking for place in front of our eyes is that God has placed us in a space where we have now been forced to feel uncomfortable. We didn't just realize that Black lives matter. We didn't just realize, well, some people just realized that, but we didn't just realize it. We didn't realize that police brutality was a problem. We didn't just realize that uh, certain groups of people are targeted more for certain, this, this, this isn't new. Hate crimes didn't just start existing. They've been existing. Uh, people killing each other did not just start, but they keep happening. These killings keep happening and keep happening and keep happening. And some people say, why would God allow these horrible things to happen? But you know that if God didn't allow these things to happen, most of us would never move. In fact, I mentioned the. Uh, the killings, the, the murders that happened in our communities all the time by our own people's hands. And most of us don't get upset and outraged about it until it hits home, till somebody close to us or in our family it becomes a victim or affected. Now it's a problem and we're crying out in rage because perhaps we had to experience that to wake us up to the fact that change needed to come. So I'm saying that perhaps God, Allah, has placed us in a space now where it is no longer comfortable for our souls and our spirits. How could your soul and spirit be comfortable in the space we're in right now when you watch somebody stand on a man's neck pleading for his life what is it for eight minutes and 46, 48 seconds? How could your soul be comfortable? So Allah has caused us to be uncomfortable. And this, un this discomfort has caused what we see as chaos. And I know some people are not going to like this. And, and that's okay. I'm ready to take, I'm ready to take the punches. But. President 45, Donald Trump, who said he was going to make America great again, had a, <laughs> misconceived notion, because the truth is America was never great. America had the potential for greatness has always held the potential for greatness, but America has not yet become great. But it appears that in the light of us having a president like number 45, Mr. Donald Trump, America could be on its way to becoming great for the first time. I'm not saying this because I, 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 I'm crazy about Donald Trump. I'm not saying this because I think that he's a good president. I'm not saying this because I think I, I agree with his policies and his dispositions and the, the, the way he says things that are seemingly 
unbelievable that he would say. I'm saying this because he is someone in a position to make all of us uncomfortable. And I honestly believe that if it wasn't Donald Trump making us uncomfortable, then we would just be back to business as usual. And then if change is ever to come in America ever to be great, then we're going to get somebody worse than him. Because if what he, well, the conditions that we find ourselves in don't cause us to move, then either God can give up on us or he can put more pressure on us to finally wake up and do what we're supposed to do. So maybe it's not a bad thing that he's our president. And I know people don't like that. Or maybe he's not. Maybe he needed to be our president. Maybe we need to be in the situation that we're in. Everything happens by the will and the permission of God. So if God allows a thing to happen, he does it for the good. So what is the good? The good is that these situations that we find ourselves in move us to a space where we can actually achieve uh, we could achieve being who we should be as people. In Quran, Allah says, "Fa'ina ma'ausur yusra." Surely, you are factored in every difficult situation, every difficulty. Are the keys for your success? He said the difficulty comes and then the ease. But it don't just the ease don't just come because the difficulty. No, you go through the difficulty and it teaches you something that will help you be successful. So we go through this struggle. We're going through this struggle right now. And God willing, if we are aware and paying attention, this struggle will lead us to solutions that can help us repair our reality. And I pray to Allah that's exactly what happens. And the second thing that I just wanted to mention before I finish, that this is the Friday before Father's Day. A salute to men, a day to acknowledge men who take on the role and the responsibility of fathers, who take on the role and the responsibility of men. Not daddies, not, not baby daddies. Fathers, men, protectors, maintainers, providers. The people who look out for their communities and their society that they live in. The men who are conscious of God and they're so conscious of God that huh, they're so conscious of God that the people that look at them see their faith in God and they feel comfortable following them. You know, in Quran, Allah says the men are the, the protectors and the maintainers of women because Allah has given him more of the ability to be the protector and the maintainer. And because he upholds his responsibility given to him by God, then women are, 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 are agreeable. Women who are... Uh, see that they have a man that is obedient obedient to God have no qualms with being obedient to a man understanding that that man will only call her to do what is pleasing to God and if she finds a man who is not being obedient to God then she's under no obligation to follow him but my point is that this is a salute to the men who accept their responsibility, the responsibility over themselves, the responsibility that they have to their own souls, to their creator, 
to their spouses, their children, their community, and etc. I didn't want to let this day go without acknowledging the men that I know that have accepted this responsibility. I wanted to tell you that I salute you. I pray that God will continue to protect you and guide you and that he will bless you in this life and in the hereafter. And I also wanted to take this opportunity to tell the men who have as of yet stepped up to the plate of responsibility. The men who would prefer to let women take care of things and women protect them and women look out for them. The men that prefer to let the women be on the front line. The men have, who have not yet come into their manhood yet. The men who don't yet know how to be fathers, leaders. For you, I pray that God will help you to grow and step into your responsibility as men. And to know that you don't necessarily biologically have to have children to be fathers or men who are protectors who look out for the wayfare of other children or in your community. We should be looking out for all of the young people. We should be looking out for the women. We should be looking out for each other. So I pray that God will guide you to the best of yourself and cause you to step into the role that he created you for and that one day you will be able to look at yourself and be proud of who you have become as a man and as a father and i wish you all happy father's day i pray to allah that he continues to bless us all that he will see us through these difficult and trying times that he will bless us to move through and past this pandemic. That he will bless us to be re reunited in a whole way with our loved ones once again, inshallah, in the near future. That he will forgive us for our shortcomings, our faults, and our sins. That he will remove from us any desire to do anything that will be damaging to our souls. That he develops in us a spirit to study his books and his signs as they should be studied and that he reward us by gifting us with insights from them to implement into our daily lives so we will be the men and women he intends for us to be that he will save us from the penalty of the fire and that he will reward us for the best of our deeds in this life and the hereafter Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum family. I was asked to remind you guys that even though we find ourselves in a position where we can't be at the masjid, we can't come here every Friday uh, right now because of the um, COVID-19, we still have some financial responsibilities in, in terms of bills that have to be paid. And so I was asked to remind you to still please uh, consider sending in your charity zakat or pledges, whatever the case may be, so that we can keep the bills paid. So if you could please kindly still send in your pledges, zakat, charity, or whatever it is you normally would give, uh, we really would appreciate it. And momentarily, uh, I will give you the electronic means by which to send those to us uh, if you don't already have them. All right. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Love you all. You can either send in your uh, charity zakat or donations or pledges uh, by sm snail mail to Al Haq Islamic Center, 6941 Prospect, Kansas City, Missouri, 641. Three two or you can cash app us, which is the most popular way of doing things these days. You can cash app us at cash app, which is dollar sign Al Hak I C. 
dollar sign A L H A Q Q I C. Or you can PayPal us, which you would go to paypal.me, paypal.me slash Al Haq Islamic Center, and you can send us money via PayPal. Or you can always direct deposit us through Commerce Bank, and the routing number is 101000001. One nine, or the account, and, oh, excuse me, and the account number is three zero two two seven. That's routing number one zero one zero 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 one nine, and accounting number, I mean account number three zero two two seven. Um, yeah, those are ways that you can send in your cash donations. They wouldn't be cat. Oh, your donations, your pledges, your zakat, or your sadaka, and we really would greatly appreciate it so we can keep our bills paid, keep our lights on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Thank MPI insurance paid, you know, stuff we got to do. But thank you very much. Uh, I'm rambling. It's Hollywood. Not my fault. I'll have my regular glasses next week. Inshallah. I'm always forgetting them. But anyway. Sister Leah, you know, you know I'll be forgetting stuff. You know I'll be forgetting. All right, my bad. Love you, mama. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, be professional. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.